Today's housing market update is very, very important. The Federal Reserve just cut interest rates. Breaking news about your money. Just seconds ago, the Federal Reserve cut interest rates for the first time since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. He decided to lower the target range for the federal funds rate by a half percentage point. How will that affect mortgage rates? How will that affect the housing market? Let's get into it. The Fed, the Federal Reserve, just cut interest rates for the first time in four years. Now the Fed has made it very, very clear that not only are they going to cut interest rates again this year by 0.5%, but they're going to cut it again next year in 2025 by 1% and in 2026 by 0.5%. So that's a lot of cutting. If I'm adding right, that's 1% now, 1% next year, and a half percent, that's two and a half percent they're gonna cut the interest rates. If the Fed reduces their Fed rate, mortgage rates go down as well. Now it's not one for one, it's not always guaranteed, but it's typically the way it happens. Now, this time on September 18th, the actual interest rates for mortgages went down prior to the announcement of the Fed rate because everyone on Wall Street knew that they were going to cut rates. It was just a matter of whether or not they were going to cut them a quarter of a percent or a half a percent. Now, if you take a look at this Redfin chart, the median sales price of a home in the United States right now is $434,050. That is up 3.2% from last year. So housing prices continue to go up. Has there been a market crash? No, they have been talking about a market crash from 2020, 21, 22, 23. We're now almost at the end of 24. There's no market crash and I don't see one happening. Now there are some places, individual markets, every real estate market is local. Certain markets like the Austin market, Austin market has been the poster child for prices going down. I will show you a chart of what's going on in Austin, but they're very few and far between like Austin. They are an exception to the rule as opposed to what is going on nationally. Now they reduced the Fed funds rate from five and a half percent to 5%. That 5% is the amount of money that a bank can borrow money from the Federal Reserve. So interest rates are actually going to be higher than what a bank can borrow because the bank needs to make money. Right now, if you take a look at this headline, it says that interest rates are now at 6.15%. This is from Reuters. It's the first time in four years that interest rates have been cut. Now, if your memory is not too short and you remember exactly one year ago, interest rates were at 7.7%. 7.7% versus now 6.1%, 6.2%. That is a big change in one year. Your buying power increases significantly. Now here's a chart that shows you how interest rates are going down. They're fluctuating, they're going up, they're going down, they're undulating, but they're slowly going down. And I presume that they're going to continue to go down with increased interest rate cuts. It's a slow journey, but it will get there eventually. Things do lag they are definitely on a loosening monetary policy, making more money available, making interest rates lower, making mortgage rates lower, allowing more people to come back into the housing market. I anticipate after the next rate cut of a half percent this year and going into next quarter of next year, that interest rates may be hovering around 5%. Maybe a little bit aggressive, but you never know. They have been going down steadily and 5% is not out of the question, especially since mortgage rates tend to go down 
based on the projections or the thought of what the Federal Reserve is going to do. Now 5% is pretty good compared to 7.7%. It is not as good as the 3% that we had going back three or four years ago. Those rates will probably not come back. I think the Fed has come out and said that the rates aren't going to go down to that 3% range. Now one never knows. There could be a big issue coming on that we don't know of. Like who would ever think that there would be a pandemic, a once in a lifetime pandemic where everything was shut down and interest rates were cut to the bare minimum so that the economy could survive. So you never know, but I wouldn't think it's going to get down to that 3% range. So the big question is what is going to happen in the housing market? No one knows for sure. However, when you lower the interest rates, you're going to have a lot more buyers who have been sitting on the sidelines. They're going to go and jump into the market and they're going to purchase a home. It may take a little while to filter through the system, figure next year, but home buyers are going to start getting more active. Will home prices go up? We don't know. If there is no more increase in inventory, home prices will go up. How much? We don't know. They could really spike or they could go up just a little bit. Now the lower interest rates will also cause some sellers to get off the sideline. Let's say they want to upgrade their house, move from a smaller to a bigger house. That 5% interest rate may cause them to put their house on the market, causing an increase in inventory. These people will buy a new house at that 5% interest rate, but there will be more inventory. If there's more inventory and more buyers, you can expect home prices to remain relatively steady. Now the third factor in this is the new construction housing market. With a lower interest rate, home builders may be more apt to build more new homes, which will alleviate the lack of homes available to everyone in the country. In the year 2023, we had 4 million homes sold. It's 4 million homes sold 2023. That was the lowest number of homes and it's single family homes, condos, co-ops, townhomes that has been sold in the United States since 1995. Kids, that is 30 years. And in 30 years, the population of the United States has gone up significantly. And yet we are at a point where only 4 million homes were sold. So that's pretty, pretty low. 2024, we're not done yet, but the projections are for just over 4 million, like 4 million and 90. We'll see what that turns out to be. That may be the second lowest since 1995, the number of homes that have been sold. On average, since 1989, we have been selling at least 5 million homes in the year 2021, we sold over 6 million homes. During the COVID period, 6 million homes were sold. Last year, 4 million. So there's a large decrease in the number of homes that have been sold. Now, while we're getting an increase in inventory, our inventory is still far below what it was pre-COVID. So we still have a shortage of homes compared to the way it was pre-COVID. We have about a three month supply nationwide of homes, meaning buyers came out and bought all the homes that were available. We have but a three month supply. So we need more homes. We need more sellers for the markets to get a little bit more even so that prices don't go higher. They stay the same. Maybe they go a little bit lower, but what we don't want are a lot of buyers coming in and nobody selling. Prices will probably go up. Nobody knows for sure. Nobody has a crystal ball. Now last year, like I said, we did have a 3.1 or 3.2 increase in home prices, but 
Every single market is different. Some markets went down, some went up more than 3%. So what did our good friends at Zillow have to say about their forecast for 2025? Well, let's take a look. Now a normal increase in home prices is about three to 5%. Zillow is predicting a 2.1% increase in home prices next year in 2025 and 1.4% in 2026. How the heck they know what home prices are going to do in 2026 is beyond me, but Hey, that's Zillow's game. They go out, put out predictions. They also buy houses and lose a lot of money, but this is what they're saying. Now, like I said before, all real estate is local. Now let's take a look at this beautiful Zillow projection chart of what's going on in San Francisco. In San Francisco, they are predicting for 2025, a year over year decrease of 3.5%. So they're saying other places are going to go up 2% on average. San Francisco is going to go down 3.5% year over year. Now their August 2025 projection is an average home price of $1.107 million. And you can see how there was a bump up and it's coming down a little bit, not a ton, but a little bit. Our next chart, we're going to go over to Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas, they're projecting a year over year decrease of 2.2%. Now, if you take a look at the peak of where Austin was like at $550,000 and right now they're looking at about $444,000, that is probably the most significant decrease in the United States percentage wise. Austin, Texas has overbuilt and they are having an issue selling their homes. So home prices have gone down and are continuing to go down in Austin. If you're looking for a bargain home, Austin might be the place to go where you can get yourself a good deal. One last one is where I am, which is Charlotte, North Carolina. They're predicting our good friends at Zillow are predicting a 2.0% increase, which is about average for the rest of the country. Um, we have not had really much of a dip here in Charlotte. So it's just continuing to go up slowly, but surely. And if you're thinking of relocating to the Charlotte Metro area, I can definitely help you out. If you're looking for a luxury or a new home or a custom home, feel free to reach out. And if you're relocating somewhere else in the country, let's say you're going to San Francisco or you want to go to Austin and get a bargain. I have a network of awesome real estate agents. You can reach out to me. Let me do the heavy lifting and I can find you somebody great. Just call or text. But is it a good time to buy a house? If interest rates have come down so substantially and you're going to stay in your house, at least four years, the time might be now for you to start looking, perhaps find yourself a home that's been on the market a while and get yourself a good deal. Last people I was with, we were able to save them $300,000 on a $2 million house because the house had been sitting there. I was here in Charlotte, but anywhere around the country, a house has been sitting on the market. Your, your realtor should be salivating. You should be salivating. And with the decrease in interest rates, you have more buying power. Will the interest rates continue to go down? Absolutely. They will. If you're looking to refinance a home, now might be the time to start looking around to refinance as well. My name is Eli Maggots. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to reach out to me at any time. And until we see each other again next time.